Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. I hope you're ready for an extended version of In The Loop today. We're talking about the Supreme Court, how someone gets appointed, how long that process takes, and will the looming election make any changes to that process? I talked to UT Law Professor Lee Strang and he helped me break some things down. Now this conversation obviously comes after the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg last week. And as we mourn, government leaders haven't wasted any time in chiming in on what they think should happen next. But before we get too deep in the weeds of those arguments, let's get some background on what the actual process is. So the president is given authority by the Constitution to nominate someone for that vacant seat. Then it's up to the Senate Judiciary Committee to vet the president's pick and hold confirmation hearings. Once the committee approves of that nominee, it goes to the full Senate for vote, taking only a simple majority to be approved. And in the case of a tie, the deciding vote goes to the vice president. Okay, so let's put this all into context with what's happening right now. President Donald Trump said he will announce his pick for the next Supreme Court justice on Saturday, already stating that the nominee would be a woman. We will fill that seat. Gonna go quick. Probably announce the person I, I don't want to make the men too angry. It will be a woman. Is that okay? I don't want to have a problem with men. While we don't know exactly who he will pick, we have some pretty good ideas. Right now, the front runner is Amy Coney Barrett, a lawyer and jurist currently serving as a circuit judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit. Barrett's history shows she's a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, and while she hasn't explicitly ruled on any abortion cases, she has cast votes in Indiana cases related to abortion rights. In 2016, Indiana passed a law that would require fetal remains to be buried or cremated after an abortion. Eventually, the Seventh Circuit decided this was unconstitutional, but Barrett voted to rehear the case. In another example, just last year, she dissented when appeals court judges tried to block an Indiana law that would require parents to be notified when a minor tried to get an abortion. So Trump makes his pick on Saturday. Then it heads to the Senate Judiciary Committee, which is currently being led by Republican Lindsey Graham. According to a GOP aide, hearings could start in the committee as early as October 12th, with a vote in the full Senate by October 29th. And while that may be cutting it close to the election, that's not the deadline. The Senate has until the inauguration in January to confirm Trump's nominee. Otherwise, the process starts over again, either moving forward with Trump's pick or with a new nominee should Biden get elected. But since we are so close to the election, there's been a heated debate between Republicans and Democrats on whether a vote right now would be fair. No court nominee in U.S. history has been considered so close to a presidential election. And Democrats say whoever wins the presidency this November should name the new justice. But Senate Republicans are trying to expedite the process, which is a bit of a role reversal. Last time this happened, nine months ahead of the election while Obama was still in the presidency, Democrats were the ones who wanted to push through, and Republicans repeatedly said the people should decide. But ultimately, in the Senate, the Republicans have the majority, and there's no real reason they can't move forward with the process. But what makes this feel so important? Well, let's look at who's on the bench right now. Well, at first glance, it seems like conservatives have the majority. While technically true, Chief Justice John Roberts Jr. tends to be more middle of the road and has often been a swing vote. And while more right-leaning than Roberts, Samuel Alito is fairly moderate as well. So whomever is confirmed could shift the current balance of the court. And something Professor Strang reiterated is the fact that the Supreme Court has been a deciding factor in a lot of polarizing issues in the country, like abortion and marriage equality. And these are life appointments. So for instance, Barrett's just 48 years old. If appointed and approved, she could theoretically serve for 40 or so years, which is great news for those who align with her ideology, but a major long-term blow for those who oppose. So that is why both sides of the political spectrum are fighting hard. And it's worth noting that senators currently running for re-election are probably receiving pressure from their constituents either to vote or to wait. And while Republicans technically have the majority, it's a slim majority. If they lose just four votes, the nominee would be denied. So it could be another close call. And if you want your voice heard, reach out to your senators. In Ohio, there are Rob Portman and Sherrod Brown. But that is all I have for you today for more of what we talked about, including some interesting stories on past Supreme Court nominations. Check out the link in the description of this video. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and you share it with your friends and you subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop on the Supreme Court.